Next, I would like to give you some brief introduction to Shanghai Tower's electromechanical key technologies. So, because of its height and also unique shape, so that's why the size of the entire electromechanical equipment is huge. And uh, because of the requirements uh, by the Chinese National Three Star uh, Rating System and also the U.S. LEED certification, and we have adopted very state-of-the-art and sustainable technologies in our design. And also because of uh, the maximization of uh, space use, and this is also a great challenge for our electromechanical system. So next I would like to divide my presentation into three parts. In the design of the electromechanical system, to the selection of equipment and system, and detailed design and construction. So let's take a look at the design of the electromechanical system. So um, the design was um, made by Constantini from the United States, and uh, the drawings uh, were completed by uh, the Tonti University. So it is also a challenge uh, that yeah, we have to convert yeah, the design made by a foreign firm into an operational yeah, drawing. So actually, first of all, we have to refer to the advanced uh, international technologies, but at the same time, we have to take into consideration the actual conditions and the Chinese local codes and uh, its uh, operational ability. And we have made a lot of researches and studies. We have also organized multiple expert panel discussions. Finally, we come up with the principles and also the action plans for our electromechanical system. So currently, um, according to this principle and also our action plans, we have already uh, com uh, successfully completed our bidding process and also the installation process. So currently, it is already the final stage of uh, installation and we are going to proceed with the commissioning. So actually, uh, the HVAC system is the most uh, complicated one. So yeah, because uh, we can see yeah, a very complicated uh, pipeline and networks inside the building. So actually, we can see that uh, yeah, the spatial relationship is also very complicated. In some sophisticated area, it is really very hard for us to do anything. Uh, we have set up two energy centers, one for the low zones and the other for the high zones. And the boiler is located in the basement. So this is the zoning of um, HVAC. Yeah, you know that, and also this is uh, um, the HVAC, uh, HVAC and also the water system, which is closely related to the pressure and safety and also the budget. And uh, this is uh, also a very difficult point for uh, the HVAC design and implementation. Especially the energy center in the high zones, uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, challenges in front of us. For example, the space uh, the arrangement, and the vertical transportation, and the noise, etc. And for the low zones, uh, and uh, uh, the HVAC system is subdivided into four parts. And uh, uh, zone one and the basement is uh, uh, one part, and uh, then zones two, three, four are another three separate areas. And uh, the energy uh, low uh, zone um, energy center is uh, located in the uh, zone two area. And also the water temperature is um, maintained at around 6 to 13.5 degrees centigrade. And for the other uh, three zones, uh, the temperature is maintained at um, 7 to 14.5 degrees centigrade. And uh, also, yeah, the ending pressure is uh, equivalent or less than 1.6 uh, megapower. And there are also another uh, four pressure areas in the high zones. And that is zone 5, zone, zone 6, zone 7, and zone 8 and 9. And uh, the high zones energy center is located in the same pressure area together with the zone 7. And uh, the uh, water, uh, the temperature of water supplies ranges from 6 to 13.5 degrees. And for the other three pressure areas, the temperature is maintained at 7 to 14.5 degrees centigrade. And uh, also the ending pressure is also the same in less than one megapower. So actually, yeah, for uh, the low uh, zones and uh, the primary, our uh, water pump is using the directional one, and uh, the secondary is using the electric one. And also for the high zones, so the primary and the secondary uh, water pumps are using the electric one. And then let's take a further look into the electrical system. And uh, we have set up uh, a uh, 110 kV substations in the base zone. And there are two um, independent lines of 110 um, um, kV. So this is the first time that just for one single building, yeah, we have an independent 110 kV yeah, substations underground. 
and uh, we have uh, also uh, arranged uh, the transformers of uh, 40,000. So in case uh, one transformer um, um, breaks down and the other one will be used as the backup in order to um, drive the entire tower. And uh, for the first uh, 110 kV cable, it is already um, supplying the electricity since um, 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 December the 30th, 2013. And uh, we have also installed uh, uh, the diesel engines and also the coal generation system. And also on the top, we have 100, oh, 270 uh, wind turbines yeah, with install capacity of so 135. And uh, we also have the water supply and drain and the fire distinguishing system. And uh, for the water supply system, and actually um, it is applied through the gravity tank for both life and firefighting. And the gravity tank employs the pumps for both life and firefighting uh, to receive the water inflow step by step. And also for our discharging tubes for the life system and the firefighting system, they are um, totally separate. And the water reservoir in the basement is 1,220 cubic meters. The water storage for firefighting is 680 cubic meters. And according to the code on the public health, the, re uh, the refresh cycle for the tanks is less than 24 hours. And actually, uh, we have also used the advanced uh, drainage system. And uh, in addition yeah, to the traditional uh, firefighting facilities, yeah, for example, the sprinkling and also the gas and the extinguisher, and we have also adopted the high pressure um, uh, fire extinguishing system. So next, the selection of equipment and the system. Yeah, first is the design and manufacturing of ultra silent air handling unit. And uh, yeah, for the office area, they are mainly located from zone two to zone six. Yeah, the office area ranges uh, from two thousand to four thousand six hundred square meters. And uh, most of the stories are 4.5 meters in height and beam depth uh, plus uh, the raised flooring plus the slab thickness equals uh, 1 meter. And uh, for the effective office area, it is mainly in the circular firm. Yeah, because um, the vertical um, elevators are used uh, around uh, the office area, so that's why yeah, the um, shaft can only be arranged around the core area. So that's why we have very limited area for the seating and also other areas. So in some cases, uh, the HVAC is uh, only yeah, uh, is quite close to the office area. And also for the office area, yeah, the noise um, um, limit should be less than N40. Yeah, all AVAB conditioning system in the and, uh, peripheral zoning adopts the seating uh, return air, and also because of uh, the height of the floor. We have also used uh, the um, suspended uh, return air system. So it means uh, that uh, the normal mufflers um, or uh, the noise reducing devices cannot be installed. So that's why during the bidding process we have very stringent requirements here in terms of the noise um, uh, level for the HVAC and also the HVAC rooms. And we also have very stringent requirements in terms of the dimension of all those HVAC. Yeah, at that time, we haven't um, found any well-established or mature yeah, um, equipment in line with our requirements. So that's why we come up with uh, the tendering um, process for the design and the manufacturing of ultra-silent air handling unit. And uh, actually, um, according to this uh, NC40 um, uh, level, and we come up uh, with the uh, relevant uh, minimum values and the requirements and particularly yeah, the noises from the low frequencies. And uh, we have also hired a third party to test uh, this uh, equipment. So currently we have already uh, installed all those uh, ultra silent air handling units designed and manufactured yeah, by the companies. And uh, basically and all those uh, indicators uh, are in alignment with our requirements and objectives. So compared with the national noise and code, Actually, yeah, the final result from our ultra silent um, uh, air handling unit is already lower than the national standard by another uh, 15 dB. So it has also boosted the capacities and the capabilities of China made ultra silent air handling unit. So these are the requirements on our uh, noise test and return air inlet noise and external noise and test yeah, based on our national code. So the key technologies include. For example, very strict control of the sound sources, 
in a fan motor operation, pneumatic, uh, pneumatic uh, noises reflection, and uh, also the fan uh, re uh, revolving speed, etc. And we have also used uh, the high performance array muffler, and we have also adopted a double deck and um, thickened uh, wallboard, and also the sound absorption material and the structure. And next is our central energy management control system. Yeah, because of the huge size, the energy consumption must be very high. So we need to take a holistic approach to minimize the energy consumption. And you can see that uh, yeah, for our heating and uh, uh, cooling systems and also all the other energy uh, management control systems. And uh, for uh, the water systems, and we have adopted the following approaches. So for example, we can use a lower temperature of water supply, increase the temperature difference and reduce the flow. And we can also try to arrange a more reasonable vertical division and also use the more efficient water pumps. And at the AC terminal, so we can adopt the following approaches. Yeah, we can imply the CO2 concentration to adjust the outdoor inflow, outdoor and indoor flow um, uses, real heat recovery, and also the low temperature inflow, as well as the brushless direct current motor fan coil. And uh, also the cold sources and uh, the heat um, uh, sources is also a challenge for our CPMS. And you can see that uh, for the high zone and also for the uh, low zones, uh, we have adopted a different um, energy management system, particularly in the low um, zones. So we have um, adopted uh, the cold generation, the centrifugal, and also the, the geothermal, and also the boiler. And uh, even yeah, for the uh, system, and uh, we have also used a different type of um, devices. For example, the centrifugal one, um, the equipment in two working conditions for the spiral um, um, systems, uh, and uh, also other some other um, um, centrifugal systems. So in order to achieve our energy conservation and minimize our budget, and we have set up our central energy management control system. So in short, we call it a CP and MS in order to have more effective control over both high zones and low zones. So this is a brand new system, yeah, in, uh, based on the structure and the energy cons uh, conservation requirements in Shanghai Center, on Sh uh, in Shanghai Tower. So uh, we hope that uh, the CP MS uh, can provide us uh, with a very stable and safety and also highly efficient um, energy sources in different zones. So it is also hoped that after some period of uh, uh, commissioning and operation, and uh, CPMS can help us to maximize and optimize our energy consumption in order to um, minimize uh, the operating expenses. You know, the key technologies um, are contained. Yeah, we hope that uh, the CPMS can help us uh, to realize very accurate yeah, load forecasting and also uh, the demand uh, management and making each system operate in its uh, um, optimal mode in order to achieve energy conservation and cost reduction. Yeah, the ice storage system is uh, relatively mature. And uh, in order to achieve uh, the China's uh, national three-star um, code, and we have uh, introduced uh, the ice storage system. The total ice storage capacity is uh, 26,400 RTH taking up 30% of low zone load. And uh, basically for the low zones, the temperature ranges from 6 to 13.5 degrees centigrade. So in this way, we can supply the air at a relatively low temperature in order to um, improve its uh, reliability and also its efficiency. So the setup time only um, takes around uh, 15 to 20 minutes compared with conventional systems, which will take around one hour. The system selects the three dual operating condition chiller units of which uh, refrigerating capacity of air conditioning is uh, 1,800 RT. Total ice storage capacity is uh, 27,000 RTH. So we have adopted the indirect ice melting steel disc tube tie component internal uh, melt ice series system and uh, um, it is energy saving and also easy to control. So you can see that the system can achieve a single ice making and dual operating, and also the single ice melting, and also the single cooling. And also the ethanol has an employs the frequency conversion control. So uh, during our bidding process, and we have um, tried to um, 
and hire the integrated um, providers, right, including all the centrifugal system, the IC system, and also the pumping system. And uh, actually, uh, this is an essential system, but we also have to make sure that uh, this um, central system can be working together with the CPMS system. They can share all these information. And then the code generation system. And according to the three star, uh, three star rating, we have uh, set up this uh, code generation system. So we have um, installed uh, two um, internal combustion um, engines, and uh, the electricity generated can also be can also be um, um, uh, delivered to the national grid inside our building. And uh, also um, the heat and the smoke and uh, also other um, energies uh, generated from these uh, two internal combustion engines can also be recycled. So actually this <laughs> remaining um, heat generated and collected and recycled from the uh, internal combustion engine can be um, uh, reused for the cooling and heating system. So for this <coughs> um, generation system, it is already well established in Western countries, but in China, it's still at its initial stage. So in China, we have seen very few uh, units of very few installations of such systems in China yet. Yeah, so actually, the key technology is also related to its integration. Normally speaking, we can only import the yeah, single units of these facilities and normally speaking, these uh, vendors do not provide the, the integration services. And for the other accessories, for example, the heat and the exchanges, they will be um, outsourced locally. So it means uh, that uh, our own suppliers and integrators have to make our own researches in order to fulfill its integration, yeah, including the design and the installation and also operation and management. Yeah, because the key issue is that we have to make sure that yeah, uh, we have to ensure a very reliable and a stable uh, supply of all the cooling, and heating, and power. So actually for Shanghai Tower, and for this uh, cold generation system, and we are using EMC uh, mechanism, the energy management contract. And uh, based on our studies, and also in order to ensure stable and continuous use of all these equipment, finally we decided to use two sets of 1.1 uh, megawatt gas internal combustion generating cells and also uh, the two sets of lithium uh, bromide heating units and other supporting facilities. And uh, we have also required that yeah, actually the utilization of the equipment should be above um, 95% and also the energy utilization ratio should be above 80%. So it is also required that uh, yeah, the equipment uh, have to be work, uh, operating um, 16 <coughs> hours a day, which means that at 6 a.m. to 10 p.m and it has, been, it has to be operating for the whole year for 335 days. And then it is about the rainwater and the sewage uh, recycle system. And according to the Chinese three-star code, we have um, installed our sewage and the rainwater recycle system. So the water sources, the wastewater sources from the square and also from indoor and outdoor. And all those um, wa uh, water which have been recycled uh, will be reused uh, for the um, car parking and also for the outdoor um, irrigation, etc. So it is uh, uh, located in the um, uh, floor of uh, 66 and also B5. Yeah, because of uh, the different functionalities, the different zones and also different energy uses, and uh, the water volume will differ. So uh, because of all these uh, different um, uh, water consumption in different zones, so it is required that uh, all those uh, water uh, recycle systems should be very adaptable yeah, to different uh, situations. And also we have to make sure that uh, all these water tanks should be very compact, which do not occupy too much space. So basically for the entire process, it goes uh, from uh, the discharge of the domestic uh, sewage, and then it will go to our water tank, then uh, for the well, and for the adjusting pool, and then for the MDR. Yeah, the action pool, then disinfection, then the sewage tank, then it will be pressurized uh, back to the user. Well, um, there are not many success stories in China to have for the sewage and recycle system for the buildings uh, with mixed uses. Yeah, one of the uh, reasons why it is not quite successful in China is that it because uh, the quality of the water, the uh, water sources are quite different from each other, and also it occupies too much space. 
and uh, there are also very complicated pipelines. So, and also in some cases, we will have a secondary pollution by the waste of gas. So um, we have also made a lot of uh, tests and researches on the sewage recycle system, and finally, and uh, we have decided to use uh, uh, the MBR approach. So this is also an innovative um, uh, recycle and uh, treatment system, yeah, combining the um, bio-treatment and also the membrane system. So actually, yeah, um, the final uh, water after treatment can be in line with the quality of our uh, domestic water. And compared with the standard um, um, sludge process, MBR can reduce 50 to 80 percent of the area. And MBR is also easy to maintain and manage, and uh, with very stable water quality. And at the same time, it is also very easy for transportation. And we have also used the an energy light quantum system to dispose of uh, these uh, materials with stink. So due to time limit, I will skip uh, the rainwater collection system. So next is our electric monitoring system. So for the uh, super tall buildings, so you can see there will be a lot of um, uh, heights, heavy loads, and many equipment, and also uh, many uh, power supplies. And also there are various vertical partitions of different functions. So that's why we can see that it's very challenging yeah, to manage the safety in our daily <coughs> operation. And you can see that uh, the power supply system of Shanghai Tower includes 110 kV, substation and also the emergency uh, uh, power supply and also the coal generation as well as the wind turbine system. So you can see that the local control and the regional management is implemented for transformer substation and we have also used the centralized management for total generation. So that's why we have set up uh, the electric monitoring system. So this is also a brand new monitoring system for Shanghai Tower yeah, based on our own electric um, requirements. So this is our functional framework of our electric monitoring system. So this is the overall network topology of our electric uh, monitoring system. And uh, actually um, you can see the control center of this uh, topology. And we also have a different service. And we have also allocated a special service dedicated to important ACS and emergency systems. And uh, we will also monitor and analyze the entire electrical system. And uh, we have also improved the reliability by means of uh, the double network interfaces. So actually, uh, the signal control and signal um, collection has also been separated by two um, uh, optical fiber systems. Yeah, you can see on the left side, we will collect and also um, handle uh, these electric signals. And on the right side, uh, this is uh, for the stabilization system in order to make further analysis. And also, we have installed relevant smart devices, including PLC, etc. Then is the detailed design and construction. Yeah, we have also met unprecedented challenges because of its unique shape, and space, and new technologies, and very complicated pipelines. So actually, yeah, we have a lot of challenges yeah, in terms of our energy and centers for low and high zones, and also the towers, and also the curtain walls, etc. So um, thanks uh, to the 3D and also the beam system, you know, we are able to uh, successfully launch this um, project. Because with only uh, 2D, yeah, that will be very difficult for us uh, to synergize and combine all the different uh, specialists in the uh, mechanical system, the civil work system, and also the curtain wall system and other uh, systems. So you can find uh, the relationship uh, with each other in this chart. This is a beam-based electrical mechanical detailed design. So actually the technical and space challenges will be addressed by the owners and the designers. And next, all these equipment parameters and requirements and also the beam information should be input into our system you know, to make sure that our space requirements and the technical requirements are in line with each other and also it should be accurate. And on the left side, that is the platform for coordination yeah, between yeah, our designers and also the on-site team yeah, in case of any problems with the operation. And uh, uh, once there are any issues, it will be coordinated by the whole team for further optimization. And on the right side, that is the coordination between the civil works and the steel structure and the curtain wall teams in order to make sure that all the milestones uh, are met.